Hi everyone, welcome back again to my YouTube channel. My name is Osere Me, and if you're here for the first time, thank you so much for stopping by, hit on the subscribe button, and also to watch to turn on the notification bell so you're the first to know whenever I post a new video. On this channel, I share sewing tutorials and pattern drafting tutorials as well. So if that is something you're interested in, you definitely want to hit on the subscribe button and become a member of this sewing family. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys how to make this simple dress I'm putting on right now. It's actually very simple. All you have to do is get two yards of fabric or two and a half yards of fabric and let's get started with this tutorial. You know that you control me. Guilty self affliction. Pray on me when I'm lonely. So guys, for this tutorial, we're going to be making use of two yards of fabric for me. Like I said in the beginning of the video, if you're on the bigger side, you might need two and a half yards or three yards depending on your size. So first thing I went ahead to do for this fabric was to fold some part of it into four because I want to cut out the front and back of this dress together. So I had my first fold and then I folded this again. This time it became into four now for the second fold i did not allow the folded end to get to the other end i left one and a half inch away from the end because i wanted that one and a half inch to be the zipper allowance for the back so this area here is going to be the center front so when you measure from the center front to the side make sure that what you have there is enough for your hip measurement and you have at least three extra inches on the side when you're done making your fold because you need the other inches for your stitching allowance on the side and also for ease because this is going to be a free dress now you're going to come to the top of your fabric here and you're going to place your tape on your center front fold and go in by how wide you want your neckline to be make sure your tape is on the center front fold and then i came in by two and a half inches because i'm working on the actual fabric and i came down by four inches so i'm going to be connecting these two to give me a round neckline notice that i took all my measurement from the front not from the zipper allowance now still from the front fold here i'm going to go in by half of my shoulder measurement my shoulder measurement is 14 and half of that is 7 but i'll be adding an extra one inch because this is going to be a free dress so i'll be marking it at eight inches here now from this point i'm going to come down by one inch for my shoulder slope you guys know i always do that and i'm just going to slope it to the neckline here like this and then from the shoulder slope here, I'm going to come down by my armhole depth, which is 7 inches. The calculation for that is on the screen. And then I'm going to use my armhole curve to just connect a curve, as you can see. Now from the center front, I'm going to go in by my bust measurement divided by 4 here. Make sure it's from the center front. It's hard to actually notice that on this fabric I'm using because of the nature of the fabric. But once you've done that, go ahead and add an extra 2 inches to what you've gotten before. This is going to be for ease and for stitching allowance. Now from the shoulder, I am going to come down to my waist. My waist is 15 inches and I just drew a line across. Now from the center front again, I'm going to measure my waist measurement divided by 4. I marked it here and I'm going to be adding extra 3 inches to the waist because my the difference between my waist and hip is very much and i don't want it to be too curvy so i added three inches to the waist instead of two inches okay now coming down to the hip area from my shoulder i'm going to measure down to my hip line which is 22 inches i also draw a straight line across and then from the front piece again i am going to mark my hip measurement divided by four and then add extra two inches for stitching allowance as well the next thing for the length of my dress, I already measured it out. It's going to be about 35 inches by the time I'm done. So what I have here is about 36. So that is perfect for the length of the dress. So now connect a curve from the waist to the hip and then another one from the hip all the way to the end of the dress. Now back to the neckline area. If you want to maintain the round neckline for both the front and back you can just continue with what we have here but for this particular one i want the back neckline to be two inches deep so i just came down by two inches from the top and i created another round neckline as you can see so now the next thing i will do is to first of all cut out the back so you cut out the back together with the front and then pick the front alone and cut out the front neckline so once you're through with that you can go ahead and cut out every other part so now the next thing we're going to do is to cut out facing for the front and the back so i have folded a piece of my fabric here into two and for the front piece i'm just going to go ahead and place the 
folded end of the neckline on the folded end of the facing just like see me doing like this and i'm just going to go ahead and trace out the neckline into the facing once i'm done cutting out the both facings i'm going to go ahead and fold the ends around and i will do the exact same thing for the back pieces as well i will just go ahead and cut it out and also i'll be folding the ends then once i'm chill with that i'll go ahead and stitch it on the neckline so i'll use it to turn the neckline over to the right side and i will do the same thing for the front as well so this is what i had after i was done turning the neckline for the front so you can see what i have here i did the same thing for the back pieces as well so now the next thing we're going to do is to place the front and the back together right sides facing each other you can see the neckline for the back i have already turned it around okay so now we're going to join the shoulders together right sides facing each other like you see me doing like this and the way i normally like to do this is i will be turning the neckline with one of the facings so i'll place the two of them together like this on the two neckline and then i will use one of the facing to just turn everything over like you see me doing like this and i'm just going to go ahead and pin it all the way to the end now i'm going to go ahead and stitch down this area and this area with half an inch stitching allowance and after i was done with that this is what i had we've joined the front and the back together on the shoulder and now the next thing we're going to do is to join the back together remember that the back is open and is two pieces um, because we are going to be having a zipper at the back so first i'm going to go ahead and pin the two pieces together and then show you guys the area where we'll be stitching down and the area where we'll be placing the zipper so guys for my zipper i'm going to be coming down by 18 inches from the top i marked it here and i'll just draw a straight line all the way to the end so from this point all the way to the top is going to be for the zipper and from the same point all the way to the end i am going to be stitching it down that is going to be the space for my zipper allowance so after stitching it down this is what i had i went ahead to pin down the zipper allowance area and stitch down the other end i just pinned down the zipper allowance area for now because um, i want to be able to um, sew this continue sewing this without any stress of the back opening at the top so now the next thing we want to do is to work on the sleeve now for the sleeve what i went ahead to do was to cut out a basic short sleeve now the length of this sleeve here is just five inches now you don't need a very long sleeve for this and for the width of this end is obviously wider than my arm you can see it's almost nine inches wide that's 18. so yeah what i'm going to go ahead and do now is to just separate this paper here i'm just marking to two inches difference and i'm just going to go ahead and draw a straight line across and cut it out so i labeled it one two three and four because i want to do slash and spread method on my fabric to make the sleeve wider now i have my fabric folded into two i'm just using all the fabric i have left for this sleeve so it's just going to be as wide as what i can get so first i'm going to go ahead and draw a straight line across the end here and i'm going to go ahead and just cut it out just to make sure that the end is straight now before i start placing my paper i'm just going to go up by about one inch or half an inch here and i also drew a line across as you can see and now i'm placing the pattern paper labeled one very close to the folded edge and i went ahead to pin it down and i'm just going to go ahead and arrange all the other pieces in a way that it gets to the end of the fabric and i'll just spread them out the distance between each one is about one inch once I'm, i was done arranging this i'm just going to go ahead and pin it down if you're working with a bigger fabric you can go ahead and measure in between but for this i don't even have enough fabric to work with here so i just spread it out and went ahead to pin it down so after doing this i went up by about half inch away from the pattern paper and went ahead to trace out my new armhole so once you're through with this the next thing you want to do is to just cut out the armhole as you can see i'm going to use the first piece to cut out another one for the other sleeve now i'll remove all the pattern papers and open up my sleeve so this is what one of the sleeve is looking like i am going to go ahead and fold the end here i'll fold it all the way to the end and do the same thing for the other piece and when i'm done with that i'm going to be attaching the sleeve to my dress so i'll get the middle of the sleeve and pin it to the middle of my shoulder here and then i'll pin the end of the sleeve 
to the end of the armhole as you can see and i'm just going to make pleats in between this area here as you can see just like i'm doing here so you're going to have like a pleated sleeve when you're done so i'll do the same thing for the other side as well to the other end the same thing and do the same thing for the other sleeve so guys our simple gather sleeve is ready you can see what it looks like right now after making the sleeves the next thing i went ahead to do was to fold the ends of the dress just so it's looking nice and clean the next thing we're going to do is to work on the ruffles that are going to be on the sides we are going to need to place the ruffles before we join the sides of this dress together so from the shoulder you're going to measure to the end of your dress and whatever you have you are going to have two times of that because you have the front and the back so what i have here is about one full tape and seven inches so that was the measurement i got for my front and back length so let's say you open it up and you measure from front to back what you are going to have is about you can see what i have here then if i fold the tape into two i need to add about seven inches extra so i have one full tape and seven inches that's going to give me my whole front and back measurement you will need this measurement to actually determine the length of your ruffle so i've already cut out my ruffle and it is longer than one full tape and seven inches obviously because this is very long i have already gone ahead to fold one end of this piece so the other end is just left like that so after folding one end with the other end unfolded i have four inches here if you're working with enough fabric you can make your ruffle five inches long now for the length of this ruffle i told you guys it has to be like one full tape plus seven inches and some extras as well because you need to be able to make pleats so what i have here is one full tape and 46 inches so that means i have about 40 extra inches added to what i measured on the body of my dress i actually hope that you guys understand this that 40 extra inches that i have on this ruffle is what i'm going to be using to make my tiny pleats now go ahead and open up your dress like i've done here and then from the shoulder you're going to go in by one and a half inch i just made a mark here and then you take this measurement all the way to the end while i was filming this video i took the line all the way to the end i just tried to make it straight down but i realized that i was drawing i was done drawing this that i should have made it follow the shape of the body that's the shape of the dress so the waist and the hip and all of that so you can see i tried to do that on this other end so when you're doing yours please make it follow the shape of the body that way it's going to fit better when you're done stitching it down i actually ended up not stitching it exactly on this straight line because i noticed it immediately i was done drawing the line that i would have made it follow the shape of the body so now i'm going to bring my ruffle first i'll fold the rough edge and i'm going to go ahead and stitch my ruffle on the line but like i said before make sure that it's following the shape of the body and not exactly the line as i've drawn here now i'll go ahead and pleat the part of the ruffle that i did not fold on this um, line as i've drawn here so i'm going to actually be more intentional about the folds when i'm on the sewing machine and i'm going to show you guys how i'm going about it now so you can see me on the sewing machine so from the shoulder to the waist i tried to follow the line then after the waist i started shifting it away from the line i was moving it closer to the hip area just so it's not too far away from the sides okay you are going to make sure that you're making your pleats in such a way that um, the amount of fabric you have for your pleats is going to be enough you don't want to pack all your pleats in one place and by the time you're done with everything one side is fuller than the other so now this is what i had after i was done pleating it all the way around so you can see on both sides this is what it looks like on the inside and this is what it looks like when i open up everything both the front and the back so now it looks as if we have double sleeve on the sleeve area and then you can see that by the time i stitch this area the ruffle is going to go outside of the bodies so that's what it's supposed to be so once you're done making the ruffles you're going to push them in arrange the front and the back piece right sides facing each other make sure to push the ruffles out of the way go ahead and pin down the sides like i'm doing right now and once you're through with that we're going to go ahead and stitch it down here and i will do the exact same thing for the other side as well make sure that you push the ruffles out of the way else you're going to stitch on it and it will not be nice so now i'm done stitching down the side as you can see 
I've done the same thing for the other side as well. And you can see the ruffles are looking very nice and clean. Last thing I want to do is to go ahead and remove all the pins from the area of the zipper that we pinned down earlier. And I'm going to go ahead and fix a zipper to this open area here. So that's the last thing I'm going to do here. And once we're done fixing the zipper, this is what it looks like. So guys, we've come to the end of this tutorial. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you find it helpful and I will be seeing you in my next one. Bye.